Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a little tour inside my vivarium so you can get a good detailed view of all my plants that I keep. And I will go into detail and have the actual names of them as well. So without further ado, let's get it. guys hope you enjoyed those cinematic shots of the 180 gallon and now let's get to the plants this is a margravia umbellata and it's one of my favorite margravias i really like the little white uh, vein that, that shoots down the middle um and it's kind of smaller it stays on the smaller side uh even when it's full grown uh as opposed to something like the rectiflora um which gets pretty big um, and it grows out of control, to be honest with you. The rectiflora does. But um, this is a slower grow. Um, I really like the look of it, and I like the size of it as well. So as you can see, I do have it in quite a few of my vivariums here. Um, I just think it's a really cool-looking margravia. And uh, oh, there's a little colubre there for you. Might as well hop in for the video. Here's another piece in the drip wall tank. That has not started growing, growing yet. I just put that in maybe a week, week and a half ago. Um, here's another piece. I'm not exactly sure if this is umbellata. Somebody was asking me if it's umbellata, and I wasn't sure, because there are some that look like umbellata, and they are not. So um, moving on to, this is a Margravia. I I'm honestly not sure on some of the actual names on these. Um, this could be Suriname, could be Ecuador, could be Rectiflora, just not adult. Um, I'm really not sure because I received some years ago from friends that just sent some to me and, you know, I never got a name on it. So um, I'm not too worried about it. I really like the way it looks. So that's why you can see I use it in many of my tanks. There's another piece there. Um, and in this tank... I'm pretty sure this is Suriname, um, not positive, but my buddy Josh sent me a bunch of it, and I think that's what that was in that tank. Um, again, I'm not exactly sure, so don't hold me to that. I'm not a plant expert by any means. Um, I have a decent success rate as far as growing plants and keeping them alive, but as far as knowing all the names, I'm nowhere near an expert. I'd say I'm still at the novice level. Here's my favorite Margravia, the Sintenisi. It's really large, but it's a slow grower. It doesn't grow like a weed or anything, and I just really, really love the look of it. And here is the Margravia small round. It just a, has a smaller round leaf like the name says. It's a really slow grower for me as well, but a really cool plant. 
Um, with some cool veining here, you'll see as I zoom in on this here, it's got some pretty cool veins. And uh, it's one of the rare Mark Ravias that I have. Not rare amongst all Mark Ravia, but for my current collection, it's on the rare side. And here we have the Begonia Lita. This is a really cool begonia. It stays really small. And depending on where you have it planted, it'll be a different color. Now this is on the ground on a 36 inch tall tank, so it's sort of darker, but if you have it up towards the higher parts of the tank, it'll be a lighter green. And there's another shot of some Mark Ravia Umbellata. Next is the Ficus Quercifolia. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but uh, don't be scared. It's not like Ficus Pamilla that'll suffocate all your plants. This is a much slower grower, but it is one of my favorites. Some people call it oak leaf ficus. Um, it's a really cool plant. The leaves stay really small. That's why I put my hand in there. I wanted to show you how small the leaves actually were. But this is also an example of when it does take over a tank, it can still suffocate like the Pamilla. Regardless, it's still a really cool plant. And even when it does take over, I still think it looks cool. So I will not remove it from this current tank it's in um, that is suffocating that bromeliad. But just to let you guys know, it can still happen with this plant. Next, we have my favorite philodendron, which is the varicosum. Um, it's a larger leafed philodendron. And I don't know if I'd recommend it for smaller vivariums. It may be a little too big depending on what you what you think is too big, I guess I should say. Um, I have mine in my 180 gallon. It's 36 inches tall, 48 inches wide. So um, it, for me, it's not too big, but you know, I could see if I, in my 22 by 17 by 24, I probably would not use it. Um, here's another quick little image of it. And now we have the dwarf African violet. It's a really cool plant. Um, it grows really crazy if it's in good light. Um, I actually had to tear a bunch of it out because it was taking over, but I still have some small little pieces of it. And it's a really cool accent plant um, if it's not too happy where it's going to take over. Next we have the Selaginella uh, gold tips. It's a really cool plant. Uh, looks a lot like moss and I don't have too much of this plant, but it is really cool. Um, I have some in the 180 gallon. I also have some of my green sip on the weenie tank. Here you can see it. Uh, it's just, it's not actual moss, but it, it does, it can be used like moss. Here we have Sangonium rei. Uh, it's a really, really neat plant. They're basically shaped like arrowheads. It's pretty cool. Um, they have that white vein down the center. I've had this plant for over 10 years. Um, it can grow pretty crazy. But if you do a decent job at upkeep with it, it's an awesome accent uh, plant for vivariums, and it grows super easy, so you should have no trouble with it. It can grow from a single leaf, um, like some of the peperomia and begonias, you know how they can just propagate from one single leaf. This is the same way. Up next, we have Alocasia black velvet. I would not recommend this plant for a small vivarium, but if you've got a big vivarium, have at it because it's an awesome looking plant. Here we have Raphidophora corthalzi. It's a really neat little shingling plant. Um, doesn't shingle as well as like a Margravia per se, but it's a, a really nice, nice accent plant that I have in many of my vivariums and it does really well with their conditions. Up next, we have a biophytum species. This is the Ecuador, similar to Sensitivum, but it's uh, slightly larger, or maybe a lot larger. Um, great plant. I get tons of questions on what plant this actually is from many of my viewers or people on Facebook, and there you have it, Biophytum Ecuador. Next, we have Peperomia turboensis. It's a nice white, silverish, metallic almost, with uh, dark green veins. In the leaves. It's a medium sized, and there's actually a Biophytum sensitivum seedling growing there. Now, moving on to some orchids. Here's Masdevalia erinaceae. This has been growing in my tank for a couple years. You can see some of that liverwort has taken over. Uh, 
Uh, it's still growing and it does occasionally bloom. These are some very young Masdevallia Aranaceae here in the drip wall tank. They haven't started growing yet, but they also have not started dying, so that's a good thing. Here we have Pleurothallus grobii small, also in the drip wall tank, very young, maybe less than a month old. So hopefully that does well. I have that split off in a couple pieces in that tank. Next is Stellus micrantha. This has been in the 180 gallon for since I've planted the tank, so I don't know, four or five years ago. It's a really cool plant, does really well. It's not picky with uh, moisture or light. If it's in brighter light, it gets brighter green. If it's in darker light, it stays darker. And it does bloom from time to time. It's a really nice orchid for vivariums. Next, we have Masdevallia Wenlandiana. I'm sure I messed that up. This was just a plant I got off eBay as a little test run. And it does do well, and it does bloom. This is Neorogelia High Voltage next. It's one of my favorite bromeliads and kind of the focal point of my 180-gallon. It does look different under different lighting, as you'll see here, as it's in a different tank under different lighting. Not as vibrant and stays a little smaller. Here's some assorted Neorogelia. I really have no idea on the names. I received many of these in large plant packages, and I don't think they had any labels on them. Some of them did. These, these right here are Neorogelia Andy Ann. I know that one. This is also Andy Ann here. Uh, those two smaller ones were Cheers. I'm not sure on this tiger striped one. Not sure on that one with the pink center either. I think those may be Super Fireball. I'm not positive on that though. Don't write it down. Oh, there's an unknown locale Bastimaos. They must have been out while I was shooting their tank. So they have some pretty cool bromeliads. Again, I'm not sure on their names here. That might be Cheers. No, I don't think it is. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> I don't know about this one either, but it's really cool. This one as well. These are really good. All of these plants, um, they rear many tadpoles, especially this one here. Um, they rear tons of tadpoles there. Um, again, I'm not sure on these or those two there. They're all just assorted Neorogelia. Now we're moving on to some of the Varigia bromeliads. This is the Splendens. As you can see, it can get really large, but it's just an awesome plant. If you have a huge tank, they'll be really, really cool in that tank. Um, that I believe as well as Splendens down low, it just doesn't get as much light. These are Vrija Splenriot. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. Very similar to the Splendens. Similar sized as well. Um, really good for large obligates. As you can see, they have those deep pools. And I have another one here, as you'll see in the 180 gallon. Right down in the bottom right part of the screen is another Splenriot. And these are some really cool accent Vrija. The Racine is this one with the uh, really cool markings on the bottom sides of the leaves. Not really ideal for rearing tadpoles due to their size, but still a really cool accent bromeliad. So that's going to do it for my plant tour that are in my vivariums. If I didn't talk about one that you see in any of the videos, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below and I will answer if I can. Like I said, I don't know all the plants, but I will do my best. And of course, there are some plants that I don't own that would have made the list, like Peperomia marginella, which I do have coming into me soon. Um, some of the larger Varigia bromeliads, like Hieroglyphica or Fenestralis, which are just awesome bromeliads, but they get too large. Even for my 180 gallon, they're too big and they outgrow it relatively quickly. Also, there's many more orchids that are just pretty incredible and unbelievable plants that I do not own, but I plan to own some more shortly. Well, that's gonna do it for now. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video and stay tuned for future content. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Ufraga Histrionica. Take care, guys.